Hey guys, Dark Recycle on FPV, and today is August 24th. I'm getting ready to work on a drone. Finally got some time to sit down and do this one, so let me show you what we're doing here. Uh, we are getting ready to do a motor replacement. The gentleman just bought this drone, but unfortunately put the wrong screws um, uh, in it when he was putting the motors back on after taking off the prop guards. The screws he put on were too long, and it actually damaged all four motors. So we're going to be doing a replacement for him. Uh, we are going to be, um, you know, helping him out a little bit here um, uh, by waving the labor but he's got to pay for the motors itself there's not much i can do about that um in either case so here we go so i'm going to go ahead and get started first thing we do is take off the top plate i'm going to get a razor knife here and just cut through this tape we will replace the tape uh when we're done but for right now i'm just going to cut it just easily get these off and kind of get these motors just kind of loose hanging i, I suppose uh and then what we're going to do is we're going to quickly desolder resolder plug them in, make sure they all spin up properly without any issues, and then ship this back to the uh, customer, okay? So let's see what we got here. The process is pretty simple. Um, the main thing is to make sure that you have the wires at the right length and that you take your time and make sure your solder points are done properly. So we're gonna desolder these remove them and then measure against them that'll be the easiest way to do it then tin the other wire so let's do that first first thing we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and put these goggles on because this is an all-in-one board and we want to make sure that we don't accidentally put solder on anything else so my solder iron is ready uh, let me clean that a little bit better there we go and let's get our tweezers and here we go one uh two and three okay Put those two aside, go to this side here. Do the same thing again, make sure you get this wire out of the way. And there we go, all right. So now that that's done, get all the any little bits of solder off the table. Let's go ahead and remove this um, these screws. I'm trying not to wear those glasses as much as possible. That way my eyes don't take forever to adjust. So we're going to take these screws out. Okay. All right, so there's our four motors. These are the screws to the top. Let's get that last screw out. There we go. All right, so what we got now is we're gonna go ahead and get the motors. Where are my replacements here? Okay, so let's go ahead and open these up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pick, uh, we know that the front motors, I believe, the rear motors are gonna be shorter wires. The front motors are gonna be a little bit longer, but honestly, it's like, I think they could all be about the same length it just looks like they're maybe longer let me just check real quick let me line these up so it's like a hair longer um for the uh for the front motors this let me see in this yeah it's a little bit longer that's fine so we'll do two and two so it should be two and two let's see uh they actually might all be the same size all right in either case here we go take the first one just line these up just like that and we'll cut it okay then we'll just use this one to make sure the rest of them are all around the same length and they are Yep, so actually they're all the same length, that's fine. So then what we'll do is we'll take the rest of the motors and match that and call it a day. Okay, another quick way to do this, if you're gonna be doing a lot of these, right, would be to simply, I'll show you just like this, simply take a, uh, let's say like a heat shrink, like this one here, uh, put this over the top like this, right, go all the way down to the motor itself, find out where those wires stop, like right about here, 
at that heat shrink, and then take that and duplicate it on every motor. And you would accomplish the same thing pretty much much quicker without any chance of making an error. So I'll show you like here, slide this down all the way down like that. Once it touches, flatten the wires and just cut right above the heat shrink and all your motor wires will be the same length. And then you can use that, just label that heat shrink from that point forward, uh, what it's for, and you'll be all set. See, makes it easy. There you go. Perfect. And I will go ahead and label this one. I don't think I have a Sharpie that's small enough to write on here. I'll probably put it in a baggie, but we know this is for a sector uh, 132, so we'll just put SECT132. Now, I'm probably going to lose that, so I'm going to find a bag to put it in here right now. And just kind of hold it. And then I'll know from this point out, whenever I get a sector 132 like that, we've got ourselves the wiring that we need. Okay. Now these wires, normally I say keep these wires, but there's no use for these ones right here. You can keep them if you have a wire, wire shortage. Their wires are very good. I mean, HGLRC, some companies put out really cheap stuff, but they actually do a very good job with their wiring. But I don't need to have plenty of it right now. So let's go ahead and strip these wires here, and we're gonna strip about two millimeters or so off. Okay, so just line that up and take the off right there. And we're gonna go ahead and just do all of them at one time. So I'm just gonna go through each motor. Okay, we've got one more left right here. Okay, so that's that. Clean out the table here a little bit, get this stuff off of here. All right, so also in these containers, we have the screws, and as you'll notice here, I think HCLRC gives you two sizes. Even the smaller size, which I don't even know. Let me make sure this is even gonna fit. Should, and that's really small. I don't see that. that the screw size that they're giving you here doesn't, it, this is too long, okay? This is gonna puncture the, this is gonna go straight through your, uh, your coils there, right? So that's not cool either. And I don't know why they're doing that. Then they give you these top ones, which I believe are for the prop. So none of these screws are gonna help you when you're mounting this to a sector frame. You've got to keep your old sector screws, all right? Or you're going to end up in the same situation where you're like puncturing the, uh, you're breaking through to the copper. All right, so now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and tin these up. So I'm going to get my flux pen, and I'm just going to lay the wires out on my table and just kind of go over them with the flux pen, just like that. Just, just kind of get the strands, uh, get the flux into those strands right there. Okay, just like that. Okay, now... Close the flux pin up and take each strand, hold the uh, silicone part, pinch the strand and spin the silicone part itself. That'll tighten up those strands pretty well. Okay, don't spin the strands, spin the silicone and pinch on the strands and that way the strands will tighten up as best as they can. There's one. Okay, because you want these spun up but it's much easier to spin the silicone that you can get a grip on and make sure that, that uh, those strands are getting tightened Okay, so we'll do all four of these. Because once you tin these, you don't want the wires. I need to restrip this one a little bit. Didn't get enough of that silicone off of there. There we go. Spin it. Again there. And again there. All right, once we're done with these four, we're going to go ahead and tin these up. 
it's going to be a pretty quick process, but I am going to use the helping hands because I'm trying to get more people to start doing this the right way. So look, get the helping hands out. If you don't have one, go to our website. We've got plenty of these and they're very inexpensive. Make sure to put these heat shrinks, the heat shrink on the metal of the helping hands. That helps to not uh, clamp through the wire and I mean to poke through the silicone uh, sheathing there. All right, once you do that, you get this lined up and it's really a matter of seconds. There's one, there's two, there's three. We'll take that down. We'll go to the next one. Remember to spread them apart a little bit like that. And then we'll do it again. One. Two. Let me get rid of that extra solder. And let's do the third one. I'm trying not to wear my goggles for this. So if it looks like I'm missing the target, it's because I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to just get my eyes to focus. Because once you use those goggles, those magnifiers, they're awesome. But I do so much work that my eyes literally take like an hour to adjust after a full day's use of those. And so I'm trying to let the more simple things be done without wearing those goggles. And so far it's been okay. It takes me a little bit longer, like this would have already been done. But I'd rather spend the time and take care of my eyes a little bit. All right. So we're on our final motor. Now when it gets to soldering this to the flight controller, I can see it, I can see the pads and everything, but I don't feel like risking it because you gotta make sure that very little, you have to, sorry, you gotta, I'm trying to not use the slang English. All right, anyways, you have to make sure that you don't get any solder spots falling right onto the board, and you see those sometimes. All right, so what we're gonna do now is let's go ahead and mount the motors, and we're gonna make sure we use the smaller screws. So as you can see, what you wanna look for when you're mounting it, just keep this in mind. Um, I don't know, I guess I can give you a measurement on this, Let's just look at something here. Let me try to help you with this. Okay, so I might need to go glasses for this. Uh, we've got about two mil, a little under two mil from this screw sticking up. Now, if you looked at the width of the carbon fiber, it's about a two mil, about two millimeters of carbon fiber. It's a pretty thin frame. I don't know. I mean, is it, is it thicker than that? Yeah, maybe a little bit thicker than that. Um, here, I'll get the calipers and see if we can get a better reading just for you guys. Um, I will warn you that I don't have patience with calipers, so once I press the button, I take whatever I get, okay? So here it is. Uh, oh, sorry, okay, we're at three mil, let's say, and the screws that we're gonna use are going to be, uh, let's see, should be like a five, most likely. Okay, so, and that's about right, because we have the head of the screw here, and so then we have a total of 636. So if we take out the, if we take the head of the screw, which is like, let's say 155, we're talking about a five mil screw. So they're giving you a screw that should give you about two mil of clearance. Use that as your guide for pretty much all your builds. Two millimeters, if you have a eight inch, if you have a, sorry, if you have a five inch arm, a five millimeter arm, uh, seven millimeter screw, okay? Uh, and depending, some motors stand up a little bit taller, but rule of thumb, just use one that gives you two millimeters of clearance, roughly, okay? So we're gonna use the um, uh, five mil screw. And we're just gonna put in two screws for now, just to get this going. And we're gonna make sure that we keep these uh, not super tight by any means, right? Because we got to line these up. So there's one. Here's the other. I'm going to put all the motors on right now. Okay, so let's do the next one. Again, make sure you get the five mil screw and not the seven mil screw. Okay, so uh, let's go with this one. Not sure who's at my house here. Oh, 
Must be Amazon. Thank you, Amazon, delivering my stuff. Sorry, guys, my dogs go crazy. But that's what it is. All right, let's make sure that fits in there good. And then the last screw. Get the rest of these out. Okay. Now with two screws in, we can pretty much finish the job, and then we go back and put the other two screws for each motor in as well. All right, so here we go. Um, other thing we're going to do is we know we're going to be putting tape down, right? So let's just give you an example of how much tape you need or what I would recommend. So let's just say if you were to measure this, and this is if you really want to be specific. You have a, I'm going to round here. So you have a 10 millimeter arm. So you have 10 on the top, 10 on the bottom, so that's going to be 20. And then you have about 2 or 3 mil on each side, right? So if you go 26, that's going to give you one wrap around. So we want to go like, let's say 2652, that's two wrap arounds. Let's just say 2652, let's go to 70, okay? So we're going to do 70 millimeters of tape, all right? And let me show you what that's going to look like here. So here's the tape, and I'm going to measure 70 millimeters, right? Right to here, let's say, okay? So we're going to cut that. We go one, fold it over. This, the next one, okay, fold it over, and then we'll do one more, right? So now we've got all four motors, all the tape ready, and the reason we're going to do this now, and I'm going to show you why here is, okay, so in order to get the tape to stick properly, now this is just me, and this is actually a customer of mine who told me he preferred this method, and he's right. So what I'll usually do is... I will, if I can get my fat fingers to peel this back, I will take this and just take a piece of it, right? Just long enough to fit over the arm because I'm about to solder these wires down and I just want to get this on here. I'll start on the top, okay? And just leave it just like that, right? And I'll do that for all four of them. It's not going to hurt anything to just leave. Just leave, just only peel back that portion. You don't need to take off the whole thing right now. Just peel back that portion and just get it ready, right? To tape, something like this, right? Put it where you want it, just like that. And the reason being is once you put these wires down, it becomes a lot more difficult, depending on how tight the wires are and how you do it, to sometimes get this tape to start underneath the wire. So you end up starting somewhere else, and then the tape may not stick very well. Um, that's the problem that I've seen at times, especially if you have like oil on your fingers, or if the, oh, I took that one completely off, that's not what I intended to do. But this is just one way that I do it. You don't have to follow it, but it's, well, especially right now as things are not going exactly as planned, but I'm trying to just kind of give you a heads up. Uh, and heads up, if you peel it all off by habit, then you're going to hate it. So there you go. I'm just going to leave it like that. That's fine. Then I'll do the last one. Okay? So here it goes. I'm going to peel just this piece right here, and I'll place that, let's say, right here like this. Okay. Now I'm going to get going and solder. Okay? There we go. So let me get my goggles on, my soldering iron ready, and away we go. Please forgive my Yorkies, they, they know not what they do. They just drive me crazy. And I will tend to them in just a minute. Okay, so there's motor one, right? Like, so there, I mean, there's one motor, not motor one, but one motor. So what you want to do now is you want to take your uh, wire here, right? Just tuck it in like this. And now, because you've already started your tape, you can go ahead and peel it now. And just wrap it all the way around. Keep the motor's wires pulled tight. When you overlap it, go back over the original area where you put your tape. So just make sure you're going over the tape only because it holds best like that. And there you go. Looks good. 
And then what you do is you just take your screwdriver and you just tuck it in there just like that and you're done. So we'll go do the other motor now. And again, just take your screwdriver there and you can basically just take the screwdriver or your, whatever it may be and just kind of feed it under there so you get a nice, like a tight line there so that all these wires are lined up straight. Okay, and now peel off your tape, wrap it around. Make sure to wrap it kind of tight, keep those wires in line. Perfect, now you got two done, okay? Very clean. Very symmetrical. All the wires are tucked away. Let's go to the next one. There's one. There's two. There's three. And again, let's just take the screwdriver, tuck these in as best as we can to straighten them out, just like that. Get them straight. Try to keep them down in the center of the arm if you can, or a little bit as close as you can. To keep them straight at least, okay? Then we're going to peel this off. And this is the one I accidentally peeled the full thing off here. There we go. I'm going to get these as straight as I can get them and kind of pull a little nicer than that. There we go. Keep it just like that. Tighten the tape, wrap that around. And we are good to go. And you see all the tape ends pretty much the same. When you cut your tape and measure it to the same length, just everything just comes out looking very symmetrical, very even. All right, let me get this. I got this yellow piece right off of here. Yep. There we go. Okay, so last one will be this one here. go. Take the screwdriver, beat the wires down, two and three. Again, try to keep them all in line with each other, just like that. Okay. Perfect, there you go. We can make this all look good just like that, right there. Everything looks great. So this is pretty much ready to go. So now what we're gonna do is, the look looks good, I think it looks very clean. So now what we're gonna do is just, we're gonna log in a beta flight very quickly. We're gonna test the motors out. So let me um, see how I wanna do this. I've got my uh, AC to DC step down here. I'm gonna plug this in with my uh, spoke stopper, okay? And I will take my USB cable. Okay, I want this to not jump up there. There we go. Plug my USB cable into the bottom here. Okay, and I will try to get you guys to share the screen here. So bear with me a second. All right, we've got everything's on. We should see our screen pop up here in just a second. So I'll get you guys a computer screen here in one sec. Let me make sure it's coming up. There it is. So you should see it now. Okay. And then let me just get beta flight on my screen. All right, there we go. So let's do this. And here we go. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to connect. We're going to go to our motors. Uh, give it time here. Go to our motors. Uh, let's just reset, reset, go to motors. 
and let's go ahead and we're going to arm motor one okay motor one spinning clockwise motor two spinning clock counterclockwise motor three spinning counterclockwise and motor four spinning clockwise everything here is perfect guys we're going to disconnect unplug power down okay we will put now we will go back and put the top plate back on and this is where i always get this backwards did i get it this time nope backwards again okay so it goes like this all right we'll do that let's go ahead and take these frame screws and put these back in now that cadex cable right here just like that okay there's one two And then the last one and then we're going to flip this over and very quickly put in the remaining motor screws so let's just do that we'll get these lined up and this drone will be ready to go now if you have a hard time putting in the remaining screws it means that you've tightened down the screws too much you need to loosen them a little bit so you can adjust your motor so that you get the holes to line up okay so this motor is done all right and as long as you know you've got the right size screws you should not have any problems okay we go so let's go to this one two And I got one more here. I'm still trying to find the last one. Uh, I must be stuck to something, but I will go ahead and get that taken care of here in a second. Uh, I have a oh, here. No, 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 no. Where did it go? I must have put it somewhere, so I may just have to call it right here. Uh, you know what? I'll use this one for now just to make sure everything fits. Uh, and then I'll find the 5 mil screw because I have put it somewhere, uh, and I'll find it. Now, as I'm working on this, I'm sure it got stuck to one of the motors or something from the old setup. But in other case, let me go ahead and get this on here. And we'll just use this uh, socket one just so we can at least make sure everything fits. And it does. So everything else looks great. The motor wires are run perfectly. I'm very happy with this. So there you go. Just like that. Sorry, I didn't mean to leave that beta flight screen on there for so long. So anyways, there you go, guys. So that's how it should look when it's done. It's already been tested, so it's good to go. I'm going to find me a 5 millimeter button head screw, M2, to put in place of that socket head when I just put in. Uh, and... Wait, wait, hold on. Is that it? No, that's not it. All right, guys, that's it. So if you have any questions, as always, please, uh, you can always hit us up at our website, cyclonefpv.com. Please subscribe to our channel here, cyclonefpv, uh, youtube.com forward slash cyclonefpv, uh, and uh, support us uh, if you'll just subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Other than that, guys, God bless, be safe, and most of all, go spend time with your family. You never know how much time you have left, guys. Go make the most of it. You can always fly later. Talk to you soon. Peace.